on the rendering side, you'll notice that under the environment set, if I go on my left hand side down to view my root menu, we go to environment set, you see that there's three enhancements. The first one under natural lights, you'll see that there's a sky intensity added. And then on the left hand side under your schemes, you'll see that there's a night clear sky being added. And then when it comes to your search, you'll see that you can now search by province because some of you may notice that if you search for Pretoria, you'll find more than one Pretoria. If you search for Boldfontein, there's one in Bloemfontein, there's one in Pretoria as well. So now you can search by province as well. So the first exercise, natural light is switched on. It's a normal day clear sky in Eastern Cape at the moment. So I'm going to say, okay, we're just going to do a normal day render. I'm going to hit the render command. I'm going to keep it basic. I'm going to use progressive rendering. I'm going to say render and then we're going to compare it with the night clear sky. This is the day clear sky as you can see on the shadows with an image in the background. So now we're just going to make a few adjustments on the environment set. First of all, we're going to change to night clear sky. I'm going to say OK. And then because I'm using a, a bright image in the background, I'm going to reduce the brightness. Under the background option, you will see that there's a sculpt image option. I browse to the image for background and the brightness by default is 1, so I'm just going to reduce it to say 0 0.2. I'm going to say OK, and we're going to hit Render. Keep exactly the same settings. And as you can see the difference between the two, the night render, my image in the background, is not as bright as during daylight, and as well as when it comes to your artificial lights, you can see the down light is better. When it comes to retrieve settings from previous renders, most of you will agree that you're not normally doing one render because each and every render you make changes to your natural light or ambient light or materials that you make changes to and then later on you would like to fall back on a previous render that you're happy with some of the settings. So now I'm going to show you how to retrieve previous settings. So in this exercise, I'm going to hit render so you just can see how this render looks like. So when you switch on the lock settings, it means Caddy will then save that settings that you set up. Now that is your render settings itself as well as your environment settings that's putting together in a lock file. So I'm not going to lock this one. I'm just going to hit render so you can see how this render looks like. See, this is a very dull render. There's no natural light comes in from the side or the shadows itself. So now I would like to retrieve another render settings. So if I say close render, the command that we're going to use is existing command, recall render settings. Now I've locked those three renders. Now it doesn't mean you have to use exactly the same drawing to recall those settings. You can make use of another drawing that you use and you like the settings. Say for instance in this case I like my advanced finishes. So then I can retrieve on drawing number two the advanced finishes from drawing number one. But in this case as you can see I'm using the same drawing and with this render, I've made more advanced settings. The natural light comes through, the shadows. So I would like to retrieve these settings to this current drawing. On the right hand side, I can tell Caddy what would I like to retrieve. So the lighting I would like to retrieve, my location, my render quality, my advanced finishes, my tone mapping, as well as my scheme. So as soon as I'm going to hit retrieve settings, I'm going to say OK, it overwrites my existing settings. So now if I'm going to hit render, it make use of that new settings. So I'm going to say render. And now this render looks exactly the same as the one that I retrieved the settings from. In this exercise, I'm going to work with lights. I split up my model space into two viewports. On the left hand side, you can see the elevation. And on the right hand side, we're going to toggle between the levels. So to activate the light command under the view, we go to lights. I said open the dialog. Now the first enhancement is when it comes to your factories or your warehouses, the commercial bulb type is being added to the list. So for our first exercise, I'm going to start off with a sodium 35 watt. Now, as you can see, my UCS is on my WCS is at zero. So as I move my pointer, it will confirm in my status bar that my UCS Z height is zero. I'm going to select my bulb type. My type is going to be a point light, and I'm going to click on the plus sign. Now, here comes the next announcement. Because Caddy will ask us, indicate new position for the light. The height is currently set to 2400. If I want to change it, I can press H for height or I can set the name. So first let's set the name. So I'm going to say N for name. And I would like to add in front GF for ground floor. 
So if I'm going to say, okay, updates in a dialogue. So I know that the name of this bulb is going to be ground floor sodium. Now, before I'm going to place it, my height is currently 2400. So if I want to change it, I could just press H for height and I'm going to make it 2300. I'm going to say, okay, and I can place my bulb. Now I want to go to my second story. So I select from my levels my second floor. As you can see, it takes my UCS to the second floor. Now that's where the next enhancement comes in. Because now, if I'm going to add a light, Caddy will look at your UCS, and from your UCS, it will place the light. So it's no longer from your WCS, it will be from your UCS. So my bulb type, let's make use of a LED cool white 5.5 watt. My type is going to be a spotlight, and I'm going to click on the plus sign. Now, once again, Gary will tell me, indicate new position. Currently, my height is 2400. If I want to change it, I can just press H for height. And let's make it 2300. If I say OK, I would like to change the name. I can press name. But what I want to show you is that even if you get a drawing from somebody else that used lights, but it didn't go with names, then I'm going to show you in the object properties how to change the name. So I'm not change the name at the moment. I'm just going to place it. And then in object properties, we're going to rename it. So can I ask us indicate the position? So this is a spotlight. I would like it to be from this side, say all the way up to the center of that portrait. And as you can see, my preview on the left hand side. So let's show all my layers. Press W for world, my UCS on world, and we do a render. My second story displays my spotlight and my ground floor is my sodium light. And now I'd like to rename my spotlight because it's on my second story. So I can close my render. And if I go to my object properties, now in my object properties, I can select the light from my model itself. Or otherwise, you can just go to your lights selected from the dialog and then go to properties and we can make changes to it. So as it says that the name is LED, I like to add second floor. As soon as I go back to my lights dialog, you will see that it will update. 